We're paper girls, so we stick together. So what were the most important things for you that you wanted to keep when translating the source material? And what were the things that you feel in a general sense needed to be altered because of the different medium of storytelling? The most important thing to me to keep was the tone, because the comics are, you know, dark at times, and there's bad words, and there, there's some harder stuff to access, and if they were going to try to water this down and do kind of like a sanitized version of Paper Girls, I didn't want to be a part of it. But uh, pretty quickly, Amazon assured us that's not what they wanted, uh, and that was a huge relief, because I think tone is everything with this show. Um, in terms of what I wanted to slow down, it really was just that that whole comic takes place in about three or four nights, you know, 30 books and three or four nights. And I thought we wanted to spend longer with Ali Wong or, or some of these older characters that you, you know, get to meet for three or four pages uh, and have these kind of really consequential interactions with. Maybe we could really kind of blow those out. And then, uh, frankly, also introduce new characters that are suggested by the comic, but they don't get to really spend time with. So. Uh, I think we just wanted to make the world bigger while also kind of hitting the things that make me a huge fan of the comic. What do you, uh, what do you think the, the hardest decision you had to make as one of the showrunners in the show? What, uh, what you make? Oh, man. Uh, I think it was in casting because uh, there was some thinking early on of like, are we really going to cast 12 year olds, you know, like maybe they should be 16, uh, maybe we should get like a face that everybody knows, you know, to, to help sell the show. Uh, and to everyone's credit, you know, we, we were able to kind of get behind, no, let's like try to cast 12 for 12, let's try to pick relative unknowns that just feel right for the characters. I mean, that was like a international search. I mean, we saw literally hundreds of girls uh, for these roles, and that we ended up with the right ones is a miracle, but I really do think we ended up with the right ones. So I, I think casting was half the show, because in, in the mouths of other kids, these lines seem kind of silly, and it seems like we're laughing at them. And, in, and in, they didn't know how to act, too, at 12. You know? Yeah. So that's pretty yeah. <laughs> But they, these girls are so effortless in making it real, uh, and then making it them. I mean, they, they change it in a way that I think makes it feel even more real in some ways than what Brian and Cliff wrote. Yeah, these girls are incredible. They I, I absolutely have to like carry the show. Yeah. Um, when it came to adding like Nate's character, for instance, like why him? Like why those characters? Well, we thought there were big opportunities in like characters that are suggested by the show, right? Like Max brother is suggested to be this really huge influence on her life. So we we're like, let's check in with that guy. Uh, in the underground, you know, there, there's a character named Charlotte in the books that, that, you know, represents the underground. But in kind of setting up the war of it all, we wanted to get to that sooner. And there were a variety of reasons we felt like someone, shall we say, unassuming like Nate might be the right person to choose. Um, and so we were very lucky that an actor of his caliber wanted, wanted to take on that role. But it was fun, you know, uh, but it, it, it's scary because you don't want to... I don't know, if you're going to add anything new to a thing that's already so loved and so perfect, you don't want it to be, you don't want it to pull focus. And, and so I like to think Nate's performance really walks out line. In the show. At the beginning of production, um, were you more towards going towards the source material, or did you want to like have your own spin on it and make it like something more unique, or were you actually focused on adapting the source material so it would be true to the fans? It's a great question. I mean, I, I think we tried to be really open about it, Definitely, anytime we got lost or weren't sure where to go, we went back to the source material. You know, and even if we didn't take the scene exactly as it was, we tried to take the spirit of what it was doing and where, what, where it was in the arc of those individual characters. It was our Bible, but at the same time, we thought it would not be fun for fans of it to come to this and just kind of be able to, like, Wikipedia what happens next. So I, I think in the same way that Game of Thrones tried to depart sometimes from the mythology and other times to hew very close, uh, we tried to make both decisions in equal measure. And um, I don't know. I, I think it's very satisfying. And, and I think it leaves you Easter eggs. So you can say, oh, my gosh, are they going to go there? But at the same time, uh, makes it something new. You know, makes it better than Paper Girls karaoke, I guess. Yeah. Why Paper Girls? Like, what was it about the story that you're like, this has to become a series, this is the one? I really recognized in Paper Girls this tone that I'd come to love in aspects of Halt and Catch Fire, specifically the Cameron Howe character. Uh, I just thought it was real and raw, and if we could get it right, 
we haven't seen actors of this age do material in this depth. Uh, Stranger Things is a show I also really love, but I don't think it, I don't think it tries to go to these difficult emotional places, and and so. I don't know. There was part of me that was just like, is it possible? I was also a huge fan. I didn't want someone to do it wrong. <laughs> um, and then just, you know, the people who started to kind of, you know, the fact that Brian was going to be really involved, that Cliff was going to be really involved. The right people were kind of signaling that this was going to done, be done the right way. And, uh, you know, you want to choose the projects that scare you. And this one certainly did. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think because it's so in all of us to, to, to feel that. You know, I mean, because I, I think at the center of this is what is the distance between who I hope to be and who I became? And do I remember it as it really was or have I changed it? And would I really do things different? I, I think we all have our own kind of private answers to those questions. Um, and so that'll always be fun to engage with. Uh, and then it was also fun on this show to just know that there's this wealth of time travel movies and films that are out there. We're not doing it for the first time. And, and so it lets you be a little less precious or self-serious, which I think is kind of the way to treat time travel, you know, to have the girls talk about it in terms of Terminator or Back to the Future, because those would be the things that are available to them at that time. And, and so that's certainly how I learned about it. Um, yeah. So Adina is fabulous and ferocious on this show. Yeah. So you want to talk a bit about not only casting her, but like was a lot of how she, you know, conducts herself on the show, was that a lot from the script or was she making her own choices to really take it to that higher level? She certainly made the character her own. Uh, the character Dean is playing, Prioress, is kind of a combination of two characters from the graphic novel, uh, Cardinal and Prioress. Uh, and I think when we gave her kind of like what we felt like was the backstory of this character, where we thought this character might go, she came in with a lot of great ideas and we just tried to say yes. Um, you know, I, I loved Adina from past performances and so that she was even willing to come in and do this was a dream. Uh, but yeah, the character is hers now and I, I think for the better. Um, I was going to say, in, in terms of dealing with actors so young and having more seasons to come, yeah. how do you deal with kind of trying to keep them as tall, 13 year olds, <laughs> if they get older? Oh, man. That's a great question. Uh, yes, it is crazy. I mean, I, I will say the actress who plays Aaron, we did some reshoots at the end, you know, of, of scenes that appear in the first episode. And I think she was a couple inches taller. You know, it changed the whole eye line. So, so. The fact that these girls are going to age before our eyes in real time is part of the show, uh, and I think the story will try to account for it. I think that's the only thing you can do. Uh, but I also think it's like what makes it honest. It's, it's we try to interview them about their experiences. Does this feel true to you? Uh, and hopefully, uh, it doesn't create too many continuity errors when we come back for it's season two. It's all <laughs> yeah, boy. I mean, we're gonna be paper rolls ten, and it's gonna be they're gonna be thirty. But yeah, so far so good. They gotta sit for seven more years. Yeah. Um, so when you, some of my favorite scenes in the series are them meeting themselves, yes. their older selves. Um, I haven't read the comics, so for those who have, is there any major differences in those moments or who they become? Uh, I think we reserve the right for there to be some major differences. You know, obviously we've kind of revealed. Um, Aaron's story in the first season, uh, and we've, we've hinted at KJ's, but uh, I think there's farther to go with all of this. Um, in that, I think that that is one of the opportunities the show has that the comic had to go through more quickly. Um, so if we're going to go through the trouble of casting these wonderful actors, asking these hard questions, why wouldn't we kind of sit down in that and, and you know, do a more full expression of it? Do you have a particular number of seasons you'd like to do, ideally, of like the correct amount to not do too much, but get to do what you want to say? Yeah, you don't want to stay too long. So, you know, from, I think if we were getting into like season five, we'd have to have a really good reason okay. for me. But, but I, I've always kind of thought maybe one... <clears throat> A number of seasons that equals the number of girls, uh, in a way. Uh, not that it has to rigidly be like this is this girl's season, but uh, that that's always been a little bit of a guiding thought. Thank you so much. I think there's Thank you so much. <laughs>